Hey, hey, we're... Hey, hey, we're back with another exciting installment of Grey's Anatomy Post-Op. I'm your guy, Gordon James, and in today's two-part episode, we're going to go behind the scenes and on the set of Grey's Anatomy. We'll be speaking with some of the people who literally build Grey's. Please welcome costume designer Mimi Melgard and costume supervisor Thomas Houchins to the show. Hi, Hi, great to be here. So why do you call this the gold room? This is where every, all the magic happens in this room because all the outfits are put together, tagged, and gives the feel of the show. And it also has heads. Yes, I love those heads. You know, they're a little morbid, but they're fantastic works of art. I think they're just phenomenal. What is the costume process? Starts with the script. It's always story driven. You know, it's years we've known these people. And it's fun to watch that character grow and morph and grow up and become an adult and have children and uh, just the clothes do that and grow along with them. How much laundry do you do? 200 sets of scrubs could go out and be laundered and back ready, fresh pressed for when the crew comes in in the morning. How many types of scrubs do you have? Because I noticed when I was getting dressed for Nurse Gregory, I was in a specific color of scrubs. Yes. And I thought that was everybody's scrubs, but then I knew because I watched the show that there's brown scrubs, yes. there's orange scrubs, there's pink scrubs. It's very easy for us to change the location of the hospital by shooting in the same hallway but changing the scrub color. And the walls are the same, but yet it feels completely different. So, I hear you've pulled some fan favorites for us. We have. Can we walk over Do you want to see, see you? Oh, this is Meredith's prom dress. I picked that dress because I loved that it's kind of, you're not sure what's going to happen. It's a plain black dress, and as the evening wears on, you've got a little, like, magical sparkles oh, happening. And I'm assuming this mannequin has its underwear on, so we don't have to worry Absolutely. about that. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right. This is a hospital, people. Serious work happens here. We save lives here. Oh, something funny? Who's are these? Ugh. <sighs> So I call this the Chasing Cars dress because it has the same effect on me as Chasing Cars does. This is the dress that made America cry. Shonda wrote the script. I shopped it, fit everyone. Shonda called and said, that's not quite the right dress for Izzy. I want something bigger. And then when I finally saw the episode where Izzy gets in bed with Denny and her dress envelops him, that's what Shonda saw, but I didn't know it yet. So then we go from proms to weddings. So this is April's dress, right? Yes. Tom, if you want to show the ketchup stain. Sure. If you remember the last time that we saw this dress, uh, April was going through an epic road trip where she dropped some french fries and some ketchup. And so we were able to come up with a quick fix of just an overlay. Dried of paint. Some ketchup. Wow. Magic of This television. is the magic. Movie magic. The wedding dress you're wearing is gorgeous. I know a cleaner who can get that stain out. Yeah, thank you, but I need a new dress. I'll see what I have in the back. Thank you. Thank you. So speaking of tricks, this is Christina's dress. She was cut out of this dress. You know, wedding dresses have many, many layers, corsets, underlines, and so it's really hard to cut through. So we rigged kind of a piece of fabric and silk behind there, so they were cutting that every time. Well, Mamie, Tom, thank you so much for letting us into your closet. Thank you for having we us. We loved it's it. a pleasure. We are in the props room of Grey's Anatomy, y'all, with the supervising producer, Linda Klein, and the props master, Ryan Blank. So you are actually both responsible for making sure that what we see on our television is accurate. I have doctors and nurses who come in here and they go, this is better than our hospital because we do have the best of the best. You know, we have stuff that the hospitals don't have. And I've seen the actors actually doing stitches that are surgical that you've taught them. I did a scene with Kelly McCreary and she said, oh, and they said, oh, you did a perfect stitch. Oh, Linda taught me. It took me two hours at home to practice. Yeah, okay, but there's yeah. specific things, especially in surgery, where you have to hold the instruments correctly. Mm -hmm. And the minute I see somebody who doesn't, because I've taught them the way to do it, it's like, this is chopsticks. And this is, you know, if you don't use these two fingers, they'll know you're not a surgeon. That's not happening on this show. So we've had you grab some of the props from the prop room because look how real that is. So you have a professional company that makes this for you then, and you just tell them what you need and give them the specs and they yeah. come out with this kind of stuff. We do. What's up with the Scott Foley head? We use that for any head that we need, not that we should be telling people this. Whenever we need a good head, we pull out Scott Foley. His <laughs> wife was on our show. Yes. We had a scene in the surgery that she was doing and we put his head in and she came over and, and looked at it and knew right away that it was him and freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> but he has the best prop story we have 
ever. So you remember way back in season one when Izzy had to make cupcakes and had to fill the counters of Meredith's kitchen. And that was a week away in the schedule. I had plenty of time to get it. Talked to the food stylist, all set up. Next Thursday, great. I get a call on a Tuesday night from my assistant. So the set's on fire. Sure enough, my phone rings. It's 1.15 in the morning. Uh, can we do the cupcake scene tomorrow morning? <laughs> what time? 10 a.m.? Jam my arm Wait. into the grocery store at 2 in the morning, push the stock guy out of the way, and proceed to shop as he's chasing me up and down the aisles. Because they were closing. They're closed. <laughs> I realize at that point that my oven doesn't have the capacity to make 400 cupcakes in the number of hours that I have. I find chocolate muffins, I tear the thing open, I lop the top off and frost it. The guy's freaking. He's like, what are you doing? you got to pay for that. I'm like, does this look like a chocolate cupcake to you? Yes. I said, I need every single one of these you have. Called both of my assistants, get all the chocolate muffins they have, meet me at stage 8 a.m. Stayed up all night frosting cupcakes, loaded the station wagon, raced here, and no one knows. You know, you would never know that story. Well, I'd like to thank you both for letting us spy on your world for a little bit. Thanks for being on our show. We yeah. Love it. Of course. We're on the active set of Meredith Gray's house, also known as the Sister House. And we are here due to the kindness of this lovely woman here, the set decorator for Gray's Anatomy, Nicole Kramer. What is your process and how do you decide on how you get the house to look each different season? Being on the show for so long, I know these characters pretty well. You know, myself and my shopper will come up with little backstories for each item that we get. We think about where they would have gotten that item, how they got it, where they purchased it, why. So uh, we like to have a lot of fun with each character. Something a lot of people don't know is sometimes these sets have to be taken apart and then put back together, correct? Absolutely. How does that happen? Sometimes we have to completely take all the set dressing out of the house and then the grips will take the walls away. I have a great crew and they take pictures on their phones. I take pictures with my camera. We, um, you know, download the pictures and we print them up and we have those for the next time that the house goes back up. And, you know, a lot of times I come in and I change things around or, you know, update certain things. So we get the impression that a life has happened in between. Yeah, places. I like to make it look like people actually live here and things change. So do the actors ever have any input? Yes, yeah, sometimes they do. Two seasons ago when we moved back into the sister house, when all the sisters moved in, the first time you see Maggie's bedroom, it's pink and a little girly. After we shot that scene, Kelly McCreary approached me and we had a little chat about it. She felt like she would have more uh, medical books and just reading books and action figures and just a little bit more nerdy. Mm -hmm. So we ended up, the next time you see a room, it's painted. And I added some Star Wars figures in there and uh, lots of books piled around. And um, then she was very happy. So do you have any favorite sets that you've decorated? Do you ever put a personal touch on the sets? Earlier in the seasons, I used to put pictures of my girlfriends and friends and my friends' kids behind really? the nurse stations. And so it was really cute. Every once in a while, I'd be like, you're on TV. We usually use mostly crew members. That's that, awesome. So yeah. the crew gets to be on TV. We write their names on the um, on the uh, boards, the whiteboards too, behind nurse stations. Most recently, I love doing the Jolex loft. And Jolex, as you know, is Alex and Joe. I was able to put a lot of my own personal touches in that uh, set, so a lot of my own aesthetic is in that. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule because we can tell it's very busy. You're welcome. How dope was that? Head over to the Love Grays Hub at abc.com for previous installments of Grey's Anatomy Post-Op. And if you're waiting for the sneak peek of tomorrow's brand new episode of Grey's Anatomy, head over there now because it's waiting for you at the end of part two of this installment of Post-Op. Get over there right now. I mean it.